Hello, this is Bern, and if you're a single, ambitious, courageous woman, and you've not been able to create the relationship that you want, on today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you the seven top reasons why this happens, so you can start taking immediate action to resolve it, starting today. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to yourgreatlifetoby.com. If you're a woman that fits this criteria, you're somebody who has great things going in your life, you have great friends, you're admired at work, you've accomplished a lot, you've moved things forward in your life, you have confidence in other areas other than relationships, but this area of your life, intimate relationships, men, intimacy is not something that has felt incredibly fulfilling for you, if it's felt more painful than exciting, but you know in your heart of hearts that you want something that stands the test of time then, you're in the right space. <laughs> For the last many, many years of my life, more than 10 years, I've dedicated my day-to-day -day life to helping amazing, courageous women from every continent and every walk of life you can imagine and every love problem you can think of to go from a period of life where they were not experiencing love to getting the love that they want. And the cool thing about it is, it's not something that I do by teaching some gimmicks or strategies or manipulation techniques. It's not the 10 mysterious texting messages that you can message a man so he can <laughs> render uh, himself helpless in your feed because I don't think that exists. I don't think that really works. I've been able to do it as a result of helping women step into the most alive, most feminine, most radiant, most expressive version of themselves and from that place, not just create the meaningful relationship they want, but create a strong connection with a man who loves them and respects them and wants to step up in service of them. I've had the blessing of also reaching over 11 million women through my videos and counting. And from all of those messages, emails, live interactions, both in my live workshops and in my virtual workshops, have learn so much about what works and what doesn't. So what you get today from me, the seven top reasons that I'm about to share with you, don't come from me watching a YouTube video and maybe reading a couple of books and winging it and coming up with some something to, to share with you right now. It comes from life experience, comes from helping women from every age group and every challenging situation to get the love they want. The first reason, by far number one reason in the world that I've discovered, no matter the continent, no matter the city, no matter how accomplished on paper the woman is that prevents amazing women from finding love, is a disconnection from their sense of worth. That means that you might intellectually feel, you can write an essay about how awesome you are, but when push comes to shove, when the Robert meets the road and you connect to a man face to face that you feel it's an accomplished man that you feel is somebody of uh, some, a worth a worthwhile guy that you don't step into the confidence that you need to in order to sustain that relationship that you in some ways put this man on a pedestal that you in some ways chicken out in expressing what you want expressing what you need or that you do that in a way that doesn't get you what you want, which we'll talk about in the, a little bit later today when we talk about masculine feminine energy. So, but the, the, this one is big because I connect with a lot of women who have a lot of head confidence, who can kick ass and take names at work, for example. But when it comes down to showing up with someone who can really give them what they want, there's this inner part of them that feels scared of not being enough, that feels scared of not being seen, that feels scared of saying the wrong thing that will shatter the illusion that this guy has and make him run away. So because of that, they show up with maybe one twentieth or one tenth or even one fifth of how they could show up. And when that takes place, when you don't show up with that hard confidence, which is different from head confidence, typically he doesn't find the value that he is looking for in you and might actually step out and even connect with someone who is not as awesome as you are, who's not as smart as you are, who's not as beautiful as you are, but who gets him, okay? So that's the first one. Uh, this is the culprit of women staying in mediocre relationships or painful relationships, taking less than they want, not being able to walk away from, from situations, not just with men, but in life that are less than what they deserve. Second reason 
why amazing, beautiful, accomplished women don't get the love that they want, not create the, the connection they want with the man they're looking for. It's a disconnection from their sense of aliveness and passion. Here's what I mean by that. If you right now are going through a process in your life where you're connected to your head but not to your heart, it's going to be exponentially harder to attract the kind of man you want. Why? Because the man you want is not necessarily connected just to your head. He wants to feel something. He wants to feel something that punches him in the heart from you, that wakes him up and makes him take the steps to actually pursue you and challenge himself to do what he needs to do to earn your trust and your heart ultimately. But when you're living the kind of life that says, well, I'm kind of bored right now, and uh, my experience of life is, let's say, zero, you're jumping out the window bored, 10 means you're full of aliveness and passion, and you're like a five or six or even seven, that means that if a guy shows up with some level of excitement, he's gonna be maybe an eight in your life, ex excitement-wise, and he might not be the guy for you, but eight is better than seven, eight is better than six, eight is better than five. So you might actually go for the guy that you don't want as a result of just wanting to feel some level of intensity subconsciously. Now, the disconnection from your liveness and purpose also makes you fall into the delusion that you can not fall in love with yourself, not fall in love with your life, but a guy is gonna come and fall in love with you, head over heels. I mean, can it happen? Of course anything can happen, but you stand 20 times more chances of a guy falling head over heels in love with you if you already are in love with your life, if you already are in love with who you are as a woman and you embrace all parts of you. Third reason why amazing, courageous, beautiful women don't find the guy and the love that they want is an imbalance in the masculine and feminine parts of them. Uh, masculine and feminine, you probably have heard this uh, words before uh, and some people demonize the masculine or uh, just overemphasize the feminine. I think both are incredibly important inside of you. Both forces, both positive and negative forces are powerful inside of you and are needed to survive and to thrive in this world. The problem becomes when your primary mode of acting and being in the world becomes masculine and you connect with men from this masculine doing, taking action, uh, making it happen, pursuing them, the type of guy that you want is not necessarily going to feel attracted to that. It's actually going to feel repelled by that. And the kind of guy you don't want, the weaker guy, the guy who doesn't have plans, the, the one who doesn't know what he wants, he's going to feel very attracted to that masculine side of you, which means typically if you connect with that type of guy, you're going to lose respect for him very soon. So uh, masculine and feminine are not necessarily traits of men and women uh, per se. Uh, I, I'm going to refer to the masculine in men and the feminine in women, but you could have a beautiful uh, heterosexual man be more in his feminine. You can have a beautiful heterosexual woman be more in her masculine, and there's nothing wrong with it. Most women are have a more feminine core, more men have more of a masculine core. What this means is in the dynamic of dating, in the dynamic of relationship, the guy will pursue the woman. The guy will take upon himself to enter the relationship in such a way that he is making it happen. And many women, because they have to step up and make it happen in their work, they have to make it happen in their business, they show up and make it happen with a guy, but that's not what the guy is looking for. That's not what the strong, conscious guy you want is looking for. He doesn't need reminders from you. He doesn't need for you to ask him out. He will do that if he really feels compelled to do it. Uh, does that mean that you have to be weaker in order to connect with a guy? No, it just means that you have to stop the doing and focus more on feminine traits, vulnerability, openness, radiance, compassion, excitement. Uh, when you connect from that place, when you're able to embody, and what part of the process that I take women through when I help them, when I coach them, is take them through a process where they can step into their feminine more consciously. And it's not about becoming more feminine, it's about letting go of that excess muscles, excess biceps they've created that prevent them from opening up to someone who really wants to nothing more than feel their heart and be taken by that. So that would be reason number three. You showing up more in your masculine and feminine, not being able to turn that switch off, not being able to let a guy pursue you, not being able to let a guy 
offer something of amazing value to you without feeling like you have to compensate and, and do something for him in return. Your radiance, your light, you showing up with enough excitement might be more than payback, more than payoff for what he's doing for you. You just need to understand it. Number four is an implicit commitment to comfort. You'd be surprised at how many women really want to experience love, but when push comes to shove, what needs to happen, the effort that needs to take place for you to create the kind of love you want, putting yourself out there, potentially risk being rejected, opening up to somebody maybe abandoning you, is so, there's so, many, so much fear around that, that you get comfortable in a life where maybe you can focus a little too much on work. Maybe you work an extra hour, two, three at work. Why? Because you are comfortable there because you know that if you put X number of hours in, you get X number of output. Love is different. In love, you can put 20 hours in and get negative hours back. It's not the same thing as business. So because it's easier to predict what can happen in business or with other types of relationships, a lot of women say, you know what? I'm comfortable with what I have right now. Here's the problem. If you take that comfort five years down the road, 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, that comfort has become an incredibly unbearable prison of highest proportions, but then sometimes it's too late. It's too late because you've built up 20 years of resistance, 20 years of pain, 20 years of baggage, 20 years of not getting what you want, 20 years of getting your heart closed and closed and closed to the point where opening up becomes a gigantic achievement. So if you find yourself in a situation right now where you're starting to notice, you know what, I'm getting too comfortable being on my own. Uh, I want someone, but hey, screw it if I don't get someone. But sometimes you, it hits you. You go to a wedding and it hits you. You see a baby being born, it hits you. You connect with some of your friends who have an amazing relationship and it hits you. You go traveling on your own and you're in the middle of this amazing, let's say, northern lights and you would turn around you because you want to share that excitement with someone and there's no one next to you to share it with. You start noticing and feeling in your heart that the comfort that you're stepping into is becoming a gigantic prison. Number five reason why a lot of amazing women don't find the love they want is because they have an attachment to guys that are not good for them. They have an attachment to a bad boy. They have to attachment, an attachment to a guy who's just a friend with benefits. There's nothing morally wrong with either of those two situations. The problem becomes that they rob you of your hunger. When you connect to a guy who's your friend with benefits and instead of feeling that hurt, that punchy hurt at night of, I don't have anyone in my life, let me go get what I want. You subdue, you medicate your pain with that booty call or that encounter and the problem is it feels exciting for the moment it's not what you want it's not what he wants necessarily but guess what happens you lose the hunger when you lose the hunger you lose the drive when you lose the drive you lose taking more action so again if you want to start stepping into the kind of love that you want become radically honest about who this man in your life are right now that are medicating your pain and lessening the intensity of the hunger that you have to get what you want. Reason number six why amazing women don't get the love they want. Many times, unfortunately, it's an inability to let go of past hurt, past pain, or past trauma. I've helped many women who've been physically abused, emotionally abused, sexually abused, and part of the problem when you are experiencing that level of intense emotional attachment to a situation that took place and, and, and you, maybe you've gone through therapy, but it's still very much in your cells. Part of the problem is that when you feel that level of hurt, you will do things, you will do the motion sometimes to get the love you want, but you won't get it. Why? Because emotionally getting it means suicide. So you connect to guys who are emotionally unavailable. You'll connect with guys who kind of want to commit and end up not committing. You will, uh, create beliefs that say all the guys in my city are bad for me or I live in a small town or I live in a super large city therefore people are not personal. You create beliefs that allow you to support that survival mechanism. Survival mechanism why? Because if you were to experience love you might also experience this emotional super intense pain. And part of the process of getting what you want is transcending that pain, transcending that trauma and recognizing that if you don't understand, you don't recognize what are the hidden benefits, what are the side benefits of you staying stuck, sometimes you will stay stuck forever. <laughs> the last reason, number seven, why a lot of amazing women 
who are intelligent, smart, courageous, don't get the love they want, is not getting support. Here's what I mean. I've connected with so many women who tell me, Bern, why should I get support for love? I mean, it's something that should come natural. My three of my friends just got this relationship and they didn't have to go through any type of coaching or therapy or anything. Why, why, what's wrong with me? Here's what I have to say. I'm not sure about your friends' lives, but I can tell you that statistically, the vast majority of people who are in relationships are in painful or mediocre relationships, which are painful by definition as well. Now, if you're telling me right now, Bern, I want to create the kind of relationship that has never existed in over the last, only has become available over the last hundred years, but before then, it was really not available. Why? Because people died when they were 45. Why? Because marriage was a transaction that took place in, in, in many, many parts of the world, in most parts of the world, as uh, securing uh, some level of transaction between families uh, or rite of passage in terms of uh, property, but not necessarily for love. If you want the kind of relationship that's new, relatively new, that is devotional in nature, that's amazing, then you need to understand that there's two different concepts that are very different from each other. One is the feeling of love, what you were born with, the warm and fuzzy feeling you, you, you felt at times in your life. Second one is the skill of love. The skill of love and the feeling of love are not the same thing. The skill of love is what is required for you to own the parts of you that you need to own so that you're in the best position to enter an amazing, sustainable, and passionate relationship that stands the test of time. And for that, there is help available. Why? Because you can reinvent the wheel, that's the hard way of doing things, or you can save yourself three to five years of pain, trial and error. How the hell is fire created when fire has been invented for millennia? So if you don't want to do that, if you recognize that what I've been sharing with you, you fall into one of these categories or more, and you recognize, you know what? It makes sense that I that I have not been able to create the love that I want because one of these reasons is really what's keeping me stuck, and you want some real, actionable help to get out of it, then I open up the possibility to connect with me. And here's what I have for you. On the description of this video, I'm going to place a link that allows you, it's gonna take you to an application form where you can fill out a very short questionnaire, fill it out with some details if you want to, to stand a higher chance of connecting, fill up the details, and if you're interested in getting help, if you want to invest in this part of your life, which is, it, by for most human beings, the thing that will create the most joy or the most pain, if you wanna save three to five years of trial and error pain, if you want some hand-holding through the process of getting the love you want with fewer mistakes and with much more of a proven path forward, then reach out and connect with me. Uh, we'll connect. If, if you fill an application, if I will read each one personally, my assistant will reply back to you if we're a fit to work together. We'll set up a time, we'll connect on a video call, and if we're a fit to work together, we will start working together. If we're not a fit to work together, uh, you'll get an email saying we cannot work with you at this moment. Uh, so hope this is helpful, insightful, and useful. Uh, if it is, just do three things for me, please. Number one, click like or thumbs up on this video. Number two, subscribe to my channel. Click on the little bell if you haven't already so you can get notified when new videos come out. Third one, first link on the description of this video that application form where if you want to explore if working with me is a possibility and you don't want to do this thing on your own, reach out and let's figure out a way to help you get exactly and precisely what you want. Thank you so much for connecting with me. As always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.